In this short video, we're going to use the Agilent Field Fox to make some practical measurements of antenna return loss and VSWR, cable loss, and distance to fault on cables, looking for cable breaks or damaged cables. Cable and antenna damage is one of the most common cause of failures in communication systems, from water ingress or accidental damage during maintenance. If a cable is damaged, or an antenna not tuned to the correct frequency, then some of the signal will be reflected back down the cable. This not only reduces the effective coverage of your base station for both transmit and receive, but the reflected RF power may even cause damage. The Field Fox is specifically designed for rugged, portable use in the field. It meets all of its specifications from minus 10 degrees C to plus 55 degrees centigrade. It weighs only 2.8 kilograms, including the battery, and it covers 2 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. So we can test everything from military HF radio systems through to land mobile, broadcast radio, marine band, air band, cellular phone bands, and Wi-Fi. For this test setup, I'm using an old VHF marine band folded dipole antenna and 30 meters of RG214 cable. We don't need any special options on the Field Fox to make CAT measurements. Every Field Fox has the cable and antenna test functions built in. And better still, every Field Fox is factory calibrated at the RF out connector across its entire frequency range. This Cal ready condition means we can start using the Field Fox immediately we arrive on site. So let's start with a very practical example. We've received a priority call out to a repeater site and quickly need to confirm that the antenna and cable are working correctly. This is where CalReady is invaluable. We just disconnect the cable from the transmitter at the bottom of the mast and connect it directly to the field fox. So I'll press mode and select cat for cable and antenna test and return loss in dB that's already selected. Now this antenna we know is tuned to around 157 megahertz in the VHF marine band. So let's press frequency and set a stop of say 300 megahertz. So the resonant frequency of the antenna should be somewhere in the middle of the screen. And you can see there's sort of a dip in the return loss there. But to be honest, the, uh, the response is really horrible, isn't it? There's uh, all this ripple is being caused by uh, multiple reflections in the cable, presumably due to bad return loss of either the cable or the antenna or more likely some damage or joiners in the cable path. So within just a few seconds, we can immediately tell there's a problem with the system. So let me press the uh, measure button again. And now let's select a distance to fault in, in dB for now. And you can immediately see on the X axis, we've got a scale from zero meters, which is here at the uh, RF port on the field fox, uh, stopping at 50 meters on the right hand side of the screen. So we've got distance along the X axis. And here you can see four or five significant peaks each of which represents a, a possible fault uh, or a discontinuity from 50 ohms on the transmission line on the way up to the antenna. Now to make sure we've got the distance scale set up correctly for this type of cable, I'm going to press Mesh Setup and press DTF Cable Specifications and we'll recall a cable type. And you can see here all of the common RF cables and microwave cables are already stored inside the field fox. If there's a cable you're using that isn't stored inside, you can simply enter the values of velocity factor and attenuation yourself. Now this is RG214, so I'll select RG214 and select recall file. So now we have a calibrated x-axis display in meters. And on the y-axis, we're measuring return loss in dB. So if I put a marker on the screen and say go marker to peak left, you'll see that the first discontinuity we have here at 1.5 meters is a return loss of 12.6 dB. Now that's going to be the very poor quality joiner that I've used intentionally between my one and a half meter fly lead and the start of my cable run. You'll also notice on this 30 meter cable, here's the end of the cable. If I just move the marker right, you'll see the cable is 31 and a half meters long, and that's where the antenna is. But you'll see that between the antenna and where we are here, there are a number of other discontinuities. 
Now, this 30 meter cable is not actually a 30 meter cable. I've made it up out of three sections of rather old cable with some very poor quality adapters, specifically to um, create some faults. Now, if you're more familiar with working in VSWR rather than return loss, it's very simple. We just press the measure button, and instead of distance default in DB, I press distance default in VSWR. And now you can see exactly the same trace with the four peaks, but now with a scale on the y-axis of VSWR. And you can see that even the worst peak here has a VSWR of about 1.6, and the other peaks are below 1.5 which may be acceptable for your installation. Although we know, having seen the return loss plot previously, that in fact it's these discontinuities that are causing all that ripple on the frequency response plot of the antenna. So within just a couple of minutes of turning up on site, we can immediately tell that there is a problem with the antenna. We're not seeing a nice, clean return loss, or if I prefer VSWR plot of the antenna, it looks horrible. And if I look at the distance to fault, we can see why we're getting multiple reflections from various points down the cable. So how do we go about identifying whether it's the cable or the antenna that are at fault? Well, let's remove the cable from the measuring system and let's connect our fly lead directly to the antenna. So now, without having made any changes to the Field Fox setup, we're still measuring distance to fold, and we've got the one and a half meter fly lead, and then that's joined to a short one or two meter cable that's attached to the antenna. And you can see this on the distance to fold screen. Marker one here is still sat at 1.5 meters. That's the poor quality adapter I've got between this beautiful test cable and the cable going to the antenna. If I go peak right, you can see here at 3.75 meters, that's the join where the cable goes onto the antenna, and the rest is the response of the antenna itself. If I now select the measurement of return loss in dB, we can now see a far clearer display of the antenna return loss, a nice clean notch, and you can see that 156.96 megahertz, uh, we have a 22 or 23 dB return loss. Or if I want to see that in VSWR terms, we can see that's a VSWR of about 1.1 to 1. So it's, the antenna works absolutely perfectly, no problem at all. Uh, it's got a nice response, it's tuned on frequency, and the return loss of VSWR is just as we want. So we've now proved within just a space of a few minutes that the antenna is good, the cable needs replacing, and we can report back to base with the results. Very rarely at a real antenna site will you be the only operator. So when you're testing your cable and antenna, obviously you've taken your transmitter out of service. But there may be many other transmitters live in operation and transmitting as you're performing the tests. Now those live transmitters could easily cause erroneous responses on the trace. So when we're sweeping the frequency range here from 2 megahertz to 300 megs to sweep this antenna, as well as seeing the response of, this, uh, of the antenna, we could also see some other responses perhaps that were caused by the transmitters. So on the field fox, under the uh, measurement setup button, there's a special feature called interference rejection. Turning on the interference rejection minimizes the chance of having erroneous responses on your return loss or VSWR traces. Now, for all the measurements we've made so far, we've not done any calibration at all with an open, short, or load, simply because the CalReady is already built in. This, this port here is factory calibrated at all frequencies. But often, we'll want to calibrate out the effect of a, perhaps our, our fly lead or another cable in the system. So how can we do that quickly and effectively without having to go through the full open short load calibration that you may be used to? Well, that's where QuickCal comes into its element. I'll disconnect the fly lead from the antenna, and I'll press Cal. And the Cal type is already set to QuickCal, so I'll press Start Cal. And we just follow the instructions. Connect your jumper cable, which we've got connected, and uh, adapter to the RF output. The cable and adapter may not be needed. Well, we want to calibrate out the effect of this cable. It says press quick cal when you are ready. So I'll press that. And it's now performing the calibration. It's just using the open circuit end of the cable, doesn't require any specific standards. We do have the option of connecting a 50 ohm load if we want a, a better quality cow, but we don't need that in this instance. So I'll press skip load and then finish. And now you can see that our reference plane for the measurement has moved. No longer is this zero meters here, but now the end of 
our one and a half meter test cable, the end of our cable here is now the reference plane, zero meters. So if I now reconnect the antenna, you'll see that the spike in response from this join has now disappeared or gone to the zero meters point. So you can see on the distance default screen here that marker one, which was at the one and a half meter distance away from here, which was the end of our fly lead, is now at zero meters. And if we move the marker to the right, you'll see now there is the response of our antenna, 2.25 meters, which is the length of the antenna's fly lead from where we did the calibration. So as you've seen, we've tested the entire cable and antenna system as well as making individual measurements of the cable and the antenna, all in the space of a few minutes and without the need for an external cal kit. And of course, with the Philfox, we can still perform the traditional open short load calibration if you prefer. For further information on the Agilent Fieldfox, please visit the website shown below or contact your local representative.